Hello everyone, today I will be coming up with the guide for Shrine of the Storms. Shrine is quite a difficult dungeon compared to the other ones. There are a lot of mechanics from the ads, there are a lot of um, things that you need to watch out on bosses. A lot of the mechanics are very punishing, proving very lethal. Um, I will be explaining some of the fights as we go. On the way to the first boss, you'll see uh, one of the ads that are called Templar. Um, it has a buff called. Um, it has a buff that looks like a shield on top of its head. It will reduce damage taken of its allies within its um, its range by 75%. So if you have this ad in the pack that you have aggroed, make sure to um, DPS it down as your priority target. One of the mobs that you want to be on the watch for is the Living Curse. It looks like the Water Elementals. One of the abilities that it does, it knocks everyone into the air, stuns them, and then bring them, bring them down. This ability cannot be prevented. Therefore, you want to pull this ad alone when there are no other ads around. There is another ad that's called Type Sage Spiritualist. What it will do is it will cast Anchor Binding, which will root the person standing in the swirls. It will also cast uh, a buff that gives them 25% haste, and also something called Mending Rapids. This must be interrupted as this will heal them a great amount, and it will be applied to all adds that are in combat. The first boss of Shrine has a couple things that you need to watch out for. The first is the debuff that gets put on people. It will slow them and it will do a significantly large damage onto them. You want to dispel the, this off the people, but dispelling this creates 5 more swirls. If you stand in the swirl, you will also be affected by debuff again. The boss will also charge at a location. If you are caught in the path, you will be knocked back and receive a great deal of damage. You want to make sure that you're not standing in its path. There will also be people that are grabbed by the tentacles. You can either remove the snare off them through means of things such as Tiger's Lust or Blessing of Freedom, or you can also kill the tentacle gripping the person. At a certain point in fight, boss will split into three little forms of himself. These adds will copy the boss's ability, such as the debuff and the charge. You must watch out of these mechanics as they are tripled now. Only when you kill all three of these adds will the boss resurface from where he has initially disappeared. Also be aware that the boss will attempt to push you back using the ability Undertow. You will take some moderate damage, but as long as you fight it, you should be okay. As soon as you turn around the corner, you will meet Windspeaker Heldus. This is a mini boss that you will see in the Shrine. What she does is she does a bit of an AoE damage, and she also puts a rune on the ground. Standing in this rune gives a haste buff, but it also gives it to any enemy standing in it as well. You want to drag the adds off the rune, but at the same time stand in the rune for more damage. As you move in, you will see Iron Hall Apprentice. What they will do is they will buff themselves, grow larger, but at the same time they will move slower. If your tank is not that well geared, you want to kite these add when they grow bigger. When you approach into this room, you will see someone called Rune Carver Sorn. What she does is she puts a bright light green, a little bit bluish, rune on the ground. This rune will decrease the damage of anyone who's standing in it by 75%, which means all adds have to be brought out of the rune. However, what she also does is something called carved flesh. It is a bright purple line that connects the caster with a player and will do about 30% of the player's HP per tech. You must stand in the room to live. 
Therefore, it is recommended, highly recommended, that everyone, or at least the range of the healer, stand in the room every time it pops up. The melee should always move into the room as soon as possible to not die from card flesh. As you move out of the room, you will see that there is a storm elemental on the bridge. This ad will put a debuff that is dispellable on the players and do pretty good amount of AoE damage. You want to make sure this ad is not pulled with the other ads as the AoE damage is pretty heavy. As you reach to the boss, you will see a lot of um, initiates. These ads will run away when they are at lower HP. Therefore, you want to pull the ads away from the boss so that they don't run into the boss and aggro the boss fight. The second boss of Shrine is pretty straightforward. I will be covering the girl's mechanics first. The girl boss will put down the haste room, which increases haste and movement speed of anyone standing within. This will allow her to inflict AoE damage much faster and increases the stats on everyone much faster as well. You want to interrupt her as soon as she stands in the room and have the tank hyper out as soon as possible. Notice that when she has a buff on her head, you will summon tornadoes when you interrupt her. So you must refrain from interrupting if she has that buff. On the other hand, the guy boss will drop the room that eliminates all debuffs and also reduce the damage taken. The tank must drag both bosses out of the rune as soon as possible. Everyone else should dip themselves in the rune to reset their stats as soon as the rune drops in. Also, when the guy boss grows larger, he will be moving slow but do increased 100% damage. You must drag this boss and kite him and not tank him straight away. Also be aware that the boss will do a cleave so melee must stay behind the boss at all times. Note that the tank could also dodge this cleave if he sidesteps the cone. The trash pack to the third boss is probably the most difficult trash in the instance. You will see something called Deep Sea Ritualist and Dredge Sailor. Dredge Sailors are easy as a single dispel will remove them of the shield that they possess. However, the Deep Sea Ritualist will continue to cast Shadow Bolt Volley. Every time you are hit by Shadow Bolt Volley, it increases shadow damage by 25%. Therefore, if you have 3 to 4 stacks, the next void hit will probably kill you. You want to be interrupting every single cast that the Ritualist makes so that you don't take increased damage from his abilities. When you are on the bridge, you will meet Abyssal Cultist. The first pack will summon Colossal Tentacles that do devastating AoE damage, so you want to be killing that off first. And then the Abyssal Cultist does something called Detect Dots. When it uses Detect Dots, you want to dispel that off as it will reduce chance to be hit by 50%. It will also use Consuming Void, which is a short magic that will turn all damage into healing, but it is a bit menial. Um, it will also do an ability called Mental Assault, which is a bit hard to see. It's a watery effect that will stun any players that are standing in front by 5 seconds. You want to watch out not to get hit by this. The third boss of Shrine is quite simple. The first is a dot that takes for quite a large amount, so you want to dispel that as a healer. The second ability is to he summons 5 orbs, one for each player. It will fixate on a designated player, and when it reaches its destination, you will be stunned. It will continue to follow for the rest of the fight. He also summons an octopus that attaches to a player and attempt to mind control it. You have about 10 second window 
to break him out of the mind control. There are two ways of doing this. One is the targeted player could run into orbs and damage himself and free of his mind control. You need to run into about 4 orbs to do so. Or you can have other players just DPS him to get out. What if you do nothing for 10 seconds? You will be permanently mind controlled. You will obviously want to choose the former by running into orbs and clearing the room as much as possible. This boss is a bit of a time attack. The last boss of this instance is, is a very simple boss. You want to tank at the outskirts of the island. When the tentacle spawns, it will lash at a certain area. You, it's pretty easy to see the purple circles. You want to dodge that. The boss will also create a void zone that silences players that stand in, stand in it. As a healer, you will receive a magic debuff that reduces maximum HP, but it increases damage done, which is used to burn this ad inside when, in the void world. The tank should be kiting this ad as it does a great deal of damage. For the DPS, they will be fighting two octopuses. Every time it gets a cast off, it will heal to full and do an AoE damage. You want to interrupt one ad as much as possible, kill it while the tank and healer kill the other ad and comes to help the DPS. When you're outside, you want to interrupt the boss's cast and then work on the little ads that he summons. Every time the little ads reach this boss, the boss will put you in transition earlier. So you want to kill the ads, but killing the ads will also do AoE damage to the group. So you want to kill ads, but not at a pace that would burden your healer. CCs work on these ads, so make sure to utilize them as much as possible. As far as the healer magic debuff, you want to retain the first one, dispel the second one, and retain the third one. By the time you are out of the second transition, boss should be nearly dead. Make sure to top off the DPS before you walk into transition, as they will be taking AoE damage from the octopus. As a DPS, if you get hit by any tentacle strikes, you will surely die without a healer. Even without DPS cooldowns, the ads should take no longer than 10 seconds as a healer, assuming that you are able to retain the magic buff into the Shadow Realm. Keep in mind that inside the Shadow Realm, the tentacle strikes are a little bit more difficult to see, so please try to dodge them as to your best ability. Once you are outside, the boss should be near death and you'll be able to kill it. Thank you for watching this guide and have a great day.